Hey there, I'm Jo, and this is Looking Outside. Join me and some of the most influential and original thinkers in business and beyond as we explore fresh takes on familiar topics. Hi, everyone. Welcome back again to Looking Outside. This is the second podcast we're doing inside of the Dubai Future Forum, reflections on what it's like to be a futurist and how you can bring great talent into the field and leverage all of the amazing work that's happening. And I am so incredibly excited to have this conversation with Grzegorz. Greg. Perfect pronunciation. Ombach. Thank you so much. Dziękuję bardzo. Asha, very, very good pronunciation. <laughs> Thank you so much. So as you can probably tell, Grzegorz is yes. Polish. So am and I. And Asha sounds also Polish. Yes, it's <laughs> definitely Polish. And Not wh- many people call me that. Why are you doing it in English then? Oh, well, you know, because it's spelled A-S-I-A. Ah, here you are. Okay. And I had okay. battles with that. Yeah, so, uh, Greg. Grzegorz, yes. tell yep. us a little about yourself. Oh, uh, first, thank you very much uh, for having me here in this fantastic building, uh, this uh, future uh, <laughs> museum <laughs> of the future in Dubai. It's it's really gla- great place, and mm. and during this two days, it's a lot of exciting things going on here. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to to something what's going to be today afternoon. It <laughs> means you are going to be on the stage. Well, so are you. Uh, so <laughs> me, I. Uh, so I am. Uh, now, about myself, you know, I have the privilege uh, working in the various industries during my career. I was in the telco Ooh. business with okay. companies like Qualcomm from mm. San Diego, California. And then I had the chance, you know, to learn how to drive very quickly the innovation to the market. Mm-hmm. And the uh, life cycles there was about, I would say, one, two years. And if you missed once or two time cycles, you were out. Wow. And we know a couple of examples like Nokia examples mm-hmm. as, as example. Then I was in automotive business, and automotive business is a bit longer cycle. It means something like seven to ten years, mm-hmm. and also a lot of disruptions happening in this area over the last, I would say, ten years or so, mm. where we see it really, and where we see how much change in area of automotive, not only from the product perspective, but from the global supply chain perspective. Mm. And suddenly we see with the new technologies like electrification, the new new newcomers into the market. I'm not mm. measuring Tesla because the Tesla is, is disruptor <laughs> for itself, but mm. also, for example, BYD from China, or you see Neos from China, or you see the Lucid uh, or Lucid uh, from, from US, uh, and Rivians from US, and, and many more. Mm. Therefore, the suddenly the new brands are coming and and changing uh, the industry mm. and now i am in the aerospace industry and aerospace industry <laughs> you'd, you you would say okay why it's so exciting and if you think about the cycle in the aerospace industry it's about 30 to 50 years wow therefore you know telco two years <laughs> auto about 10 and here four or five times longer it's right, incredible right. but but <laughs> in this industry, in the aerospace industry, huge changes are in front of us. Mm-hmm. And the biggest biggest changes uh, which are coming, because if we look at this industry, something like during the last hundred years, we had the three revolutions and now the fourth revolution. I have a privilege being in the company Airbus, uh, and Airbus is leading the industry in the area of aerospace, but we ju- not just to the aircrafts, great aircrafts you mm. probably were using when you were coming here. But then also what we do is helicopters and also what we oh. do is the uh, defense and space, you know, right. and, and yeah. before the portfolio is really rich and uh, independently in which part of business you are going to look at mm. in all of these parts, the I would say not just uh, a transformation happening, mm. like you know, like continuous transformation, mm. but the revolution is happening in all parts of the businesses. Right. Uh, and and in the role which I am now at Airbus, mm. I am uh, privileged driving so no disruptive research and technology. And it's, as I say always, it's the, probably the uh, the best title I have ever in my in my career. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it, but it was not the reason why I took the job. The reason why, why I took the job was that this what we do today is going to have an impact for the next 50 plus years. Mm, yeah, well, definitely, especially with the life cycle that you were explaining there. Oh, yeah. So you're kind of going um, e- extending the duration of the impact that you can have through the industries that you're working in. I can't even think of something that is longer than three, 30, 40 years. I mean, maybe government. 
and infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah that could you be see, your next. It, it is. I think. I think it's comparable to infrastructure. Infrastructure mm. sometimes is even shorter than 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 aerospace. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you just look yeah. recently, the the last Boeing 747, which was something like 50 years in production, right. it just stopped uh, uh, life uh, in the production, but still flying. Therefore, uh, you know. Uh, those aircrafts, once you, you certify them yes. and bring them into the market, mm -hmm. then they are flying. At least the life, average life, it's about more than 20, 22 years, but it mm -hmm. goes beyond. And then you can see them for mm -hmm. something like 30, 40 years in the wow. eye. Yeah? Wow. It's not dissimilar to McDonald's restaurants, actually, which last for over 40 years. So you can uh, come and help us design. But I think that they're also changing a little bit the portfolio, you know, mm. about the McDonald's. I, 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 I'm using quite often or when I'm on the way to Poland, by the way, from mm -hmm. Germany, where I live in Munich, mm. I'm crossing the Austria. And in Austria, you have even in McDonald's, you have the new new products, which yes. are which are uh, plant-based uh, mm -hmm. uh, food. Therefore, uh, this is also the big shift here happening. Right, right. And so, and that's an, a really interesting point because when we think about, like, in the realm of your title, disruptive research and technology, you're equally looking at the uh, the actual physical product that you're designing, but also the components inside of it, right? And even how the components are sourced and what they provide to the end consumer. And this is kind of whole ecosystem of what you're looking at for disruption, I imagine. So where where do you start when you're thinking about that? Do you start with, um, you know, what actually touches the, the user of the product? Or do you think more about the, you know, the infrastructure that supports the product? Uh, it's, it's a it's a good one, and I think uh, you know it's everything is about the, the goals you would like to reach, mm. because uh, uh, if you think about the aerospace and particularly before the COP28, which is starting a few days from now here, uh, the biggest challenge that you have in this industry is to make the flying uh, uh, more sustainable as we as we have today mm -hmm. and and if we think about this fourth revolution I was mentioning about the one was about bringing the aircraft into the air the second one was about making it safer it mm. means that's as many starts and as many landings mm. the third revolution was about bringing it broadly to the world that everybody can use it and now the fourth revolution which is happening now is about making that this industry is going to be net zero by 2050. Mm. Therefore, I think if you have such kind of a goal, it is, of course, it's not the destination. It's just the one uh, one target you have on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And after 2050, we are going to be continuing making it better, uh, mm. more efficient and so on. But if you just think about this target 2050, it means it's just 20 years from now and even less. And uh, from the aerospace perspective, it's very, very quick. Okay. Mm. Therefore, what we what we look last something like thirty years, mm. we reduce already the emissions of the aircraft about thirty percent, fifty percent. Sorry, fifty percent. Last thirty years, fifty percent. And now during the next twenty years, we are going to reduce another fifty percent. Therefore. When when you ask where those ideas are coming from, then uh, the the one the one push is this fourth revolution. It mm -hmm. means we have to ensure it's going to be more sustainable. There are of course the other drivers which are, which are happening. Okay? You you what you do you you look also after the global market forecast. It means you see how the situation is changing in the world. Mm -hmm. And as we did, for example, in the past, beautiful aircraft, Airbus 380, a double decker, and <laughs> I love it, you know, a lot of new technologies. Mm -hmm. But suddenly the situation, global situation, doesn't need such kind of a big aircraft mm -hmm. anymore. It needs mm -hmm. a different kind of aircraft. Therefore, the, this, this is changing as well. Therefore, you have to take all of these aspects into account to make decisions in which direction you are going to push your future product mm. or products and for these products you need the technology bricks mm. and what also what we are doing is uh, in my organization we have so known uh, scouts mm -hmm. uh, and the scouts are distributed worldwide you, you have the guys sitting in US you have the guys sitting in Europe in Asia India uh, mm. uh, and so on and these guys their role is to get out and to spot the new trends and mm. new 
new things are happening in the, those regions mm -hmm. because each region is specific for itself. Yes. There are some commonalities between those different regions, mm -hmm. but there are also some nuances mm -hmm. which you would mm -hmm. like to really pick up. Yep. And these guys are going to the forums like this future forum here in Dubai. And then they are going, for example, to the places uh, like universities, labs, mm. uh, going to the pitches of the startups, and then they have a, they are filling the pools of the ecosystem where they are, and mm. then they are bringing those informations back to our organization, and with this data we can predict a bit better what are the current trends uh, from from our perspective which are important for us which you have to take into account by mm. making decisions about their next projects yeah that's incredible and it's very similar to something that we've got uh, or that we're setting up i should say at mcdonald's called signal scanners so we want these people to go and be proactively scanning mm -hmm. the environment and bring that back into the business. And what we're doing is really kind of leveraging the people who are just naturally passionate about foresight and futures and are just naturally doing this. Are you finding th those people as well that are just natural advocates for the future or are they tasked with this? Uh, and you know, uh, the job has to fit to the profile. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you, the, for, for, for these jobs, we have a people which are really very open, mm -hmm. which they don't have to be, you know, the deepest engineers by in the car, but they have to have a good understanding about the ecosystem in which they are placed. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and with this, uh, they do this job for, for a couple of years and then they are moving on and the new coming in mm -hmm. we are driving it already for for quite a while and also what we what we are doing which is a bit more crazier than than just scouting we have we have a part in our central research and technology department uh, which is in my organization as well we have a part which we call blue sky thinkers Oh, okay. can I and be a part of that? That's uh, kind of you have already, you have already blue, blue, blue. Yeah, I'm ready to yeah, go. You're already blue today. <laughs> the, four, uh, the blue sky thinkers, these guys are, are 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 allowed to be a bit more crazier. Mm. It means they are thinking really about the the uh, things which are the moonshots, uh, which can potentially come in the future and have a huge impact on on Airbus. Mm. And I just give you one example. The, uh, because we are running there's something like three, four, five parallel projects mm. on these blue sky things which potentially could pop up in the future. The one of them, which was, by the way, presented here yesterday as a mm. technology, is about bringing the energy from the solar power plants which are on the geo orbit and beam it to the Earth. We oh. call it solar power beaming. Okay? Right. okay, and this solar power beaming, uh, uh, we, we, we looked into this technology as a potential solution to solve the problem with, uh, with the solar or with energy on the earth. Mm. It means on the one side you have the, like if you put the solar on the earth, then uh, you have a 24 seven cycle. It means mm. as day, night, da, da, da. You have also clouds or no clouds, depends where mm. you do it. But this is not the continuous energy flow. Now, if you would be able to put such kind of a solar power or solar plants uh, uh, into the georbite, then you have a 24-7 sunshine, mm. uh, and then you are beaming it microwaves into the earth, and you are <laughs> picking it up. And this, we did already some uh, with these guys, with the Blue Sky Thinkers, we did already some testing on the mm. earth first. Mm. And next year, we are bringing it to the third dimension, not to the geo yet, but mm. to to some, with some balloon above the earth to <laughs> see how the technology can potentially be scalable to the gigawatts in the future. Of course, there are a lot of the challenges with this, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we are from the space side, we, we would develop the new technologies which are very important, which we are working already on, like the new power electronics, which has to operate under the different uh, temperature conditions, mm. the new uh, photovoltaic systems, which have to be more efficient, which you could maybe build in the space. You have to develop, of course, the robotics, which uh, you have to <laughs> use in order to make it on the scale you would like to have. Mm. And then, then, therefore, uh, you know, it's a combination of the different technology bricks and the vision wow. we have for for uh, supporting as a one of the potential solutions uh, the energy on on the on the earth 
I love that idea, though. And I think that's really important that you're both giving the space to come up with these blue sky ideas, blue sky thinking, and then really thinking through the practicalities of how do you c execute that and commercialize that, essentially. So I can tell, obviously, that you're a very naturally creative thinker. And being in the role that you're in and, and the experience that you have, you're a natural futurist. But my last question for you is, if you weren't in the future space, what would you be doing? I would be sailing. Oh. I would be sailing all, okay. all, all day long because uh, the sailing is a little bit like, you know, discovering the new places. Okay. And you would never know uh, what's going to happen on your road before or on, on, your, on your course. Therefore, you have to sometimes adjust it, change it. There is a wind or there's no wind and so on. But definitely, I would be sailing uh, uh, around the world. And this is my plan, nevertheless, for for future. <laughs> for your retirement. Absolutely. Are you, are you sailing for pleasure or are you sailing I do, to I do. explore? I do. I do both. It means, okay. you know, the pleasure can be also exploration. Okay. Yes, it means I, okay. I, I, I think that I would be not good at uh, just uh, pleasure. Uh, it has to be the action connected with this because mm -hmm. of uh, the drive I have in myself mm -hmm. and the energy as well. Therefore, it has to be combination of both. But, of course, where well, I can explore that there is a pleasure as well. Yeah, I think you're, you can't get away from being a futurist, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, this was a, a really fun conversation, and um, hopefully it will be a part two that I can bring you back on the show for. And we have so amazing. many things which we can talk oh, about, absolutely. because we haven't touched even on the hydrogen aircrafts, which we are working oh, on, my goodness. or working on more, auto, <laughs> I would say, automatization for the aircrafts, or working on the other crazy things which we have in portfolio. I, I can imagine. Yeah, well, we're getting kicked out. Otherwise, I like I've already delayed them yeah, five yeah. minutes. I'm like, let us keep talking. This is so interesting. Maybe the next one we can do in Polish as well. Let, let's do it. Yeah. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję ślicznie. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, or share the show. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep looking outside.